все, ну, всех победим, всех убьем, всех, кого надо, ограбим, все будет, как мы любим. Давайте с Богом. Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. We start today's video update with the knowledge that world has became just a little bit better because in St. Petersburg, some brave woman was able to deliver explosive device right in the hands of a big hater of Ukrainians, a person who was actively calling to exterminate Ukrainians and kill as many as possible and basically promote Russian imperialism by the name of Vladlen Tatarsky. He is now a lot better than he was before and we all should celebrate that and another thing that we can celebrate is uh, something that we didn't do uh, right away in this channel but that when the war started i was not doing videos and we were doing some things with my wife we were helping some of the refugees and my wife uh, actually went to the border with poland to help get some of the refugees uh, to here to denmark to help them settle find homes and basically try to do whatever she can. And there was actually an artifact that they left with us. So we have this drawing from a girl uh, from the time still when the Kherson was occupied. It is from Polina. Uh, for, she's 10 years old and she's from the village of uh, Lisovode. So, and she made us this drawing that says, uh, my Kherson is not gonna fit in your mouth. It's just uh, so basically uh, mocking all of the Russians about how unbreakable Kherson uh, will and Ukrainianism is. So from now on, this drawing, the artifact uh, that that stayed with with us during the start of this war, and to, as a thanks to both this community and what we're doing and to support Ukraine. Now, please look at this and know that whenever we're supporting Ukraine, we're supporting actual people like this 10-year-old girl. It's going to be here from now on. But we're continuing with the overview of what's happening on the front lines. And uh, right now is uh, what I was telling you about, uh, that the Russia had reserves. They were able to regroup. The, uh, regroup. Now the reserves have been sent towards Bakhmut, uh, Bakhmut uh, and Avdiivka direction. And right now is the time when these massive active battles are happening. But let's cover it uh, in details. Uh, firstly, just a quick mention around Kremina. So here around Kremina, the battles are still happening, but it's all the same tactical battles. We see almost every day some videos from the area. Heavy flamethrower systems from Russia are used. It's the vacuum bombs, so-called. Uh, so there is plenty of fighting that is happening in this area, but this is all positional fighting right now. Uh, Russians have more or less have been stopped moving towards the north. So no movement there. The same one is here. So here in the area of uh, Orikova Vasilivka, we both hear that Russians sometimes are trying to push but we also seen videos of Ukrainians trying to a do a little bit of counter pushes. And I'm going to cover the weather aspect in just a second. Uh, what is around the outskirts of Bakhmut? So Russians obviously try to push towards Kromova, but as far as we know, this has been stopped completely. And they were able to move just a little bit towards north, towards Ivanivske. But uh, it is also in my awareness right now that this is where Ukrainians are also executing their localized counterattacks. So roughly we can say that there is no advancement uh, done uh, on the outskirts of Bakhmut in order to encircle the town. So the only kind of major uh, problems in Bakhmut is happening inside the city. And this is where I, I'm saying that this is where Russians really want to have Bakhmut captured. They have the numbers, they have the firepower because they're being supported both by artillery. And we also know that because like the Russians are having um, these wings on the side of Bakhmut, they're able to also use their air force, especially because Russians are also now using some kind of a, like a similar to JDAM systems, but they made them themselves. Uh, so they're using aviation bombs. So there is a lot of firepower that the Russians are bringing. And the uh, center of the city is the hardest supply position for Ukrainians. So there is few troops uh, poorly supplied against many Russian troops that have a lot of support uh, coming for them. With that said, it is still a very slow grind for Russians. 
usually I don't like to cover like things super in details on the map because it doesn't really matter. You know, what matters is like the tempo of advancement, you know, the big picture. But people really, really ask me, like I received a lot of emails, people asking me like, Georgie, can you explain like how bad the situation is in the center of Bakhmut? And uh, basically my argument was that Russians are not advancing fast enough. And this is indeed what we're seeing. The more they go into the city center, the harder it is for them, the slower it is, despite all of the advantages they're having. So right now we can say that this northern part of the city up to about this point uh, is uh, Russian controlled. But uh, here this was already, I would say, contested or actually Ukrainian controlled because we do hear that Ukrainians have positions here and they are counterattacking and trying to slow down the Russian advancements from the north. So you can say that the deep state here is up to date for now. As for the southern part, we know that Russians are really trying to advance just along the river here. And they're trying to get additional support from the other side of the river. And this is how they're advancing. And this is where the hardest fights are happening. And the reports on fighting are extremely extremely difficult extremely extremely difficult but this is the state uh, at which we expect it if the fresh reserve just came in then that's when like the biggest waves on advancement are also happening that's when the fastest advancement is happening so we should expect that the tempo while it might be well it's not really fast like i cannot call it fast but like the tempo will be slowing down over time the point is they are fighting almost to the entry to the city center of Bakhmut, but to enter the city center of Bakhmut does not mean getting through the center of Bakhmut, and it doesn't mean taking the city. It is still far from, from that, far, far from that, especially because on the other side of Bakhmut, around Korsunskova Street, uh, we are hearing that Ukrainians are counterattacking and actually pushing Russians again a little bit back. So Bakhmut, I hope this, this kind of covers it, like at least for the next couple of times. But Bakhmut so far holds its super heavy fighting, but all in all, the situation is not critical. Well, it is critical. It's just Ukrainians are amazing and they're doing complete wonders, superheroes for sure. Now, there was uh, another commentator, I'm not going to call names, but uh, and he was saying in very interesting terms that Ukrainians uh, have gathered some forces and they were about to counterattack Bakhmut. And I know it's a quite a popular um, reviewer of uh, the situation for uh, Ukraine. And, and I want to counterweight to that because we didn't know, like the fact that Ukrainian troops are concentrating anywhere. Firstly, I don't think it's it's really good to talk about where Ukrainian troops are, where they're concentrating and where they're moving, especially when there is a request for a blackout. And secondly, uh, the fact that Ukrainian troops were concentrating somewhere did not mean that uh, the plans of them were known. Uh, it might be something else completely. So we did not know that if the attack would start or would not start uh, for Bakhmut. Uh, I was expecting, again, that the attack for Bakhmut would start at some point, but uh, my expectations that the attack and the counteroffensive for Ukrainians would start closer to May-June, because right now, as we've seen recently, there are videos of weather being quite nasty, there is snow, and we're expecting rains in the coming weeks. So that is normal for April, actually, in, in this uh, region. So that's why I was not expecting that we should see any kind of major dry days incoming, especially because weather forecast was available before. Moreover, uh, my, we still hear that Ukrainians are not having all of the equipment and uh, ammunition that they need. So I think that expectation that the counteroffensive was about to start on Bakhmut is a little bit premature. I would even say a little bit extremely premature because we still need to, we still know that while ukrainians have completed their training for example on tanks i watched some of these videos how ukrainians were training on tanks and there was a lot of training done yes 
but it was training that was done on, with a, for personal individual units on individual tanks. They will still need to do some kind of cohesion training uh, to operate with other units, especially to operate together with infantry that are located in Ukraine. The, the infantry for the new brigades that are going to be participating in the counteroffensive. So I am not completely certain where the notion that, oh, the, the counteroffensive was already up on, upon us and now the weather spoiled it and now it's not going to happen. I do not agree that it was up there. And to kind of round it all up, uh, Avdiivka direction, uh, a lot of people are worrying because, again, uh, we're hearing that Russians are attacking in Avdiivka direction as well. It's the same direction here, 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 uh, here and so on. We hear that a lot, but the only thing that we're seeing from kind of back of it is just Russians being sniped and destroyed, sniped and destroyed, sniped and destroyed. Just recently, there was an amazing footage about how Ukrainians just like there was like a tank column that was advancing in Avdiivka and it was just like sniped with javelin after javelin after javelin. Amazing footage. Uh, maybe I'll uh, put it in my Discord, which you should join. So join Discord, look up the link in the video description, and also share this video to, to your social networks so more people can see it, and we are competing with some of the pro-Russian propaganda. So now, let's go to the discussion part. Today we talk about mobilization and gathering of additional forces in Russia, because a lot of people are still taking whatever Russian uh, Ministry of Defense or Putin is saying for granted. And I just need to explain where is reality compared to what they're saying. So from the get-go, a lot of questions actually came my way saying, Georgie, when uh, the year just started, you said that Putin and Russian MOD and a lot of Ukrainian uh, command also said that uh, Russians are looking to mobilize more men. But now it's been like, winter now it's uh spring it's already almost middle of the spring but there is still no mobilization in russia does it mean that they will not pro do mobilization or you were just wrong or you were just pulling our leg and the answer to that is quite simple because russians need mobilization they need manpower because as much as we want to say it's like okay 300,000 that they were able to it was 250 260,000 but let's add up two additional months of uh, people just volunteering and coming along let's say 300,000 the, the the people that they gathered with the previous wave of mobilization by this point a lot of them are a little bit dead and that's not the best part for for that's not the best news for Russians because this means that uh, because of their offensives because of how complete failures there were they've not only wasted a lot of the people and their resources I'm sorry I'm calling people just like well for Russia it, it is meat they're just throwing it uh, onto Ukrainian positions just to trying to uh, get them uh, to spend more bullets than they have men so it's it's basically a crazy person situation no one in no army no general can cope with such a level of attrition for troops this uh, just is logically would mean that russia needs additional set of troops so now putin says okay we need 400,000 more troops but it's not going to be mobilization. Now, the order for mobilization was never cancelled in Russia. So technically, they can still do mobilization. But it is clear that mobilization was a huge risk at the beginning for Putin. And it's uh, it wasn't as great as we think it was. Because while they did get a lot of people onto the ground, it's shown that quality of these people are not the best. They are okay as cannon fodder for defense, you know, just to plug in holes. But when they're being tried to be sent onto the enemy positions, that becomes problematic. So Putin 
uh, looked at the data, essentially, well, at least his analysts looked at the data and said, what, what motivates Russians? And he noticed that, oh, well, maybe not him, but his analysts noticed that, whoa, oh, people go to Wagner's and they, you know, get the money. Whereas the underperformance of something like uh, idealistic position, you know, motivation with uh, trying to idealize like, like uh, this glorious fight against Nazism didn't really motivate a lot of Russians. So instead, they want to uh, bring out this big campaign pain right now uh, onto the Russians where they are saying join the Russian forces, join the uh, Russian military and they want to spread it a lot. So they invested a lot into the marketing. They want basically to both local governors uh, promote joining the military forces. They also want local mayors to promote. And more importantly, we also hear the news that like local, um, how do you say, like uh, uh, building overseers, like administrators of a building collective, like if you're living in an apartment building and you have an administrator for that apartment building, they want that even like a small administrative staff like that also would promote joining uh, to Russian military to basically like have meetings like every couple of weeks to try to talk like, oh, the man should join the military, whereas the, the women should try to consider maybe donating something. So they're trying to essentially force mobilize the uh, Russian population, except it's not really force mobilization. It's a more of a utilization of administrative staff. There's a lot of issues with that because we've seen that the Russian society does not really respond well. And while there was this layer of people that were motivated or really, really greedy, it wasn't as large. And especially uh, they're right now hoping to get like over 20,000, I believe, like 25,000 or something uh, population from Moscow or St. Petersburg. And that's like, that's rich cities. Like firstly, like last time there was almost none gathered from it. And a lot of analysts saying that it's going to be a big flop, that they're not going to get enough uh, manpower because Putin is afraid. Remember, he's a coward. He's really, really scared for his political positions. So because he's so scared of it, uh, they are now going to try to essentially motivate people to join with money, to join with the contracts. Uh, they're going to also um, try to influence fresh new uh, people that join the military or join the military before. For example, as the new conscription starts for this 19-year-old uh, conscripts, there is also a couple of hundreds of thousands conscripts that are coming out of the one-year mandatory conscriptions. And these people for this one year, they've been completely brainwashed like like every week they would have like you know a minute of hatred towards Ukraine explaining how many Nazis they are how much money they can earn with contract that explaining that they cannot uh, earn anything else if they don't study with military because now the year of their life have been wasted and they have no skills and and like maybe it's not going to work for you but like a lot of these Russians it might work for for and basically, they want to say, oh, this is going to be a voluntary war. So they want to have this voluntary force. And I can guarantee you, it's not going to be uh, as they expected. Because as, as brutal as Russians are, they're also very, very passive. So trying to expect them to get something somewhere, I wouldn't count on it. It's not going to be 400,000. It's not going to be even close. There are definitely going to be. So I would expect, I don't know. 150, maybe 200,000 max. But then again, I also been known to overestimate a lot for what Russia can achieve. Just look at the ammunition supplies. I was telling you like last year that Russia has uh, factually infinite stocks of ammunition. And now Russia is scrambling to find any kind of ammo because they're running short and they're basically unable to do large scale operation at all with the way they're fighting. With that said, thank you so much for watching this. Thanks so much for all of the people that are subscribing and supporting this channel. Please check out first comment of the video. Support Ukrainian military. I love you all, guys. Slava Ukraini, and I'll see you next time.